Well, a number of Emancipation Day events will be held across Canada today to celebrate when slavery was officially abolished across the British Empire. It was just over a year ago that the House of Commons officially designated August 1st as Emancipation Day in Canada. It's meant to mark the day in 1834 when the Slavery Abolition Act came into effect. That act freed more than 800,000 black people in Britain's overseas colonies. Rosemary Sadler, social justice activist, advocate, Black History Month. Kathy Grant, first presenter at the Owen Sound 160th Emancipation Festival anniversary, founder of the Black Canadian Veterans website and history co-chair for the National Apology Advisory Committee. And Captain Kevin Jr., Canadian Forces veteran and single point of contact lead for National Apology Committee. All three join me now. Thank you so much for your time today. Okay. Thank you very much for having us on today. I want to get all your thoughts here. Kevin, let's start with you first. What does today mean to you? Uh, t today is a day where we, we remember the ancestors. We remember what was done to the ancestors and in um, the government recognizing today it shows that we've come a long way mm -hmm. but we still have a long way to go we certainly do rosemary what are your thoughts well i'm actually really delighted to see that the efforts that i began in 1994 to have august 1st commemorated as emancipation day has culminated in a national uh, commemoration mm -hmm. and that there are events that are taking place all across the country including a national televised event that will be taking place this evening. So it's very exciting to me. It certainly is. And Kathy, how about yourself? Uh, it means uh, freedom, like how far we have come since uh, slavery was in Canada, uh, the ability to um, have jobs that we were not able to get back then, the ability to, I guess, like wear your hair, like how I have my hair now, mm -hmm. and um, and be accepted. I think uh, freedom is what Emancipation Day means to me, freedom. Being who you are, as you are, just as you are indeed. And of course, as we've been mentioning there, and you've marked it as well, today officially being designated August 1st as Emancipation Day here in Canada. Some have questioned why it has taken so long, and others are also adding to that. Should there, there, there needs to be an apology as well with all of this. We haven't heard that. Kathy, what, what do you feel? Um, I think that uh, for, for many people, there's not a consciousness, they're not aware mm. that there was um, slavery in Canada. I think a better job could be done in terms of um, highlighting it, like sharing it. And in terms of an apology, I know that we just recently had one for uh, number two, construction battalion. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, the advocates for getting this apology, I think that there's a lot of work that, that, that's involved and I think it's a lot of um, harmony, getting people together, more awareness to let them know about what happened. I know that for our number two construction battalion, we went across the country, we got more people to be become aware of it. Mm -hmm. I think if there's a greater awareness, I think that might help um, expedite the apology. Rosemary, uh, spinning off now on what Kathy is saying and, and more of that education, more knowing more about the history behind Emancipation Day, what are your thoughts here? It isn't acknowledged enough. It should be taught more in schools, for example. Well, uh, as we've talked previously, Angie, mm -hmm. um, when I was successful at having February declared as Black History Month with that initiative that I put forward to federal representatives, I really thought even then there would be the opportunity to use that as a means of encouraging the provinces and encouraging educators to do more in terms of African Canadian history. But it really does need to be a top down approach. I think we have seen some incredible bottom up approaches where people have taken the initiative to get some information out there. But I think that we really do need still to work on having a required black history curricula, not mm -hmm. just in a history course, but also throughout our educational system in every subject area. And that also means that we need representation in the mm -hmm. community because not everybody's in our school system. And that representation happens in the media. That, rep that representation happens in 
corporations, in our institutions. It happens in terms of who's on the front line, but also who's making the decisions right. in the boardrooms. We need more African Canadians represented there as well. Kevin, what are your thoughts here? And where do you want to now see things go? You and your position have broken so many barriers and have made so much headway and provided that representation. Where do you want to see it on a larger scale here in Canada? Well, um, I think that's an absolutely great question. The thing that, that we I think we need to look at is the, the, the government has now accepted um, the, their role of the Canada's role in in slavery, um, we've 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 seen it where um, you know I was talking to to Jean Augustine and she tells the story of how she went through all levels um, of of the different parties to get a unanimous decision to to make him Black History Month um, a, a national event. Now what the government needs to do is to step up and said we've accepted that we mm -hmm. have uh, done wrong. We we've accepted that. We need to do more. The government now needs to have a proper action plan as to how they will repair the relationship with, with the black community. And that action plan should have very solid metrics to mm -hmm. show how they will make sure that um, the generation today and generations to come right. will never go through anything like that. And, and in that, you know, um, I, I have to quote Bob Marley, in which he says, um, "We have to. We also, as a people, have to emancipate ourselves from right. the mental slavery." So the, it's a two-pronged effect mm. in which we have to recognize who we are, recognize where we are, and recognize where we want to go, and work with the government to ensure that we repair that relationship. Captain Kevin Jr., Rosemary Sadler, Kathy Grant, an honor. Thank you all for giving me your time today.